My name is Alan LaBelle. Um, I was born July the 2nd, 1945 in Canmore. And I grew up in Exshaw, uh, spent the next um, 19 years in Exshaw um, before moving to CB, where I got a job with uh, Calgary Power. But um, most of, all of my childhood was, was spent here in Exshaw. Um, played a lot of sports and uh, when I was younger the, um, the sports was um, not, not as pro prolific here as it was in Canmore. So we used to go to Canmore uh, to play hockey and baseball and all this sort of stuff. Back when I was uh, probably 13, 12, 13 years old, trying out for a hockey team in Canmore, and um, I don't know why I did that, because, uh, although I do know why, because the reason I did that was because I loved to play hockey, and the competition here in Exshaw was, well, it was lesser than what I needed to have <laughs> for my own personal satisfaction. So I tried out for this team in Canmore, and which was, something I probably shouldn't have done because my dad was a shift worker. My mother didn't drive. And so there were many times when, when my dad was, say, on night shift, where he'd have to cut his sleep time short to drive me to Canmore to, <laughs> to either practice hockey or play hockey or, or what have you. And uh, I, uh, I really owe him a lot for that because uh, that went on for probably... Um, four or five years at least until some of the um, older kids in town here, um, Gerald Martini comes to my uh, mind right now. He, he was one of the older fellows, probably about um, uh, six years older than me or so and he had a, once he got his driver's license then he, he was kind enough to, to give people like myself and Bill Hogarth, uh, people like that, uh, rides to the to our hockey and uh, so that was very fortunate it helped my dad <laughs> but I think my dad so I think my dad didn't mind driving me though because uh, he would always stay there and watch he would always watch me play so and he, I think he kind of enjoyed that later uh, after uh, um, you know we got a little older into the late teens early teens even um, we that we sort of fell out of the of the competitive sports, and uh, that kind of um, that kind of softened, and and we didn't st I didn't start up playing sports again until probably I was in CB, uh, and I started in CB in 1965 with Calgary Power, and uh, that's when. Uh, few years later the sports picked up again uh, because with people all my own age <coughs> sort of but uh, Exshaw was always uh, it was kind of a cool place to live because uh, I mean you could walk anywhere um, and there was a lot to do as a kid because the the um, the hotel had a huge uh, canteen in the basement and and uh, we always went up bowling uh, and later on playing pool. When <laughs> you, you, you had to be on the good side of the people who were looking after the, the concession there be, as to whether or not they let you play pool or not. Uh, it was basically designed for the, for the working uh, people of Canada Cement. And uh, when they weren't using the pool table, the uh, the um, people who were running the con concession, uh, uh, Henry uh, Lohman, I believe his name was, um, he would always let us go and play pool and as long as we behaved ourselves. And uh, weekends, we were in the wintertime, there were, uh, I think it was Maxine Lazzarotto, uh, she um, organized a, a bowling league for, for the kids and we bowled for a number of years and uh, uh, then a few of us actually joined the um, the adult league in the, in the evening, 
after that. Uh, and that continued on in our, into our late teens. Uh, and that was a, maybe one of the reasons we were allowed to bowl with the adults is that we used to set the pins. <laughs> Which was a which was a which was a uh, scary thing sometimes because some of these uh, fellows uh, I don't know if I should mention their names or not could really wing the ball down the alley and the pins would just go flying and and we'd have to you'd have to duck for uh, out of way out of the way uh, and uh, I know it was, it was quite scary at times there was there were about three guys that could throw the ball so hard and the pins would you'd think they'd explode they just they'd just fly. And, uh, but we used to, in the winter time, I think winter time was more, we were more active than we were ever in the summer. Um, it just, um, maybe that's just the way the valley is because back, back in the day, um, uh, in the fifties, early sixties, we used to get a lot of snow and, and we used to get extremely cold weather as well. <clears throat> I can remember as a, um, probably a 10 or 11 year old kid, we'd be out in an outdoor rink and it'd be like 20 below zero. Uh, if you were, if you thought you could dress, stay warm enough and maybe you had, were short a marble or two, <laughs> those of you who were that, in that situation could go out, we would go out and we'd play hockey at minus 20. And, and we used to, uh, there was, uh, a fellow, Ray Cardinal, he, uh, he, was, he was a fanatic about hockey and he would organize a, a group of whoever was interested to, we'd go up to the uh, skating rink and we would stay there overnight and flood the rink. We would continually flood the rink and it was quite a, it was quite a, a neat thing for, well, at least we thought then. The skating rink was in the old part of town, uh, like in 1972, they, they, they tore the town down to make room for the new plant. So it would have been um, roughly just north of the school where the school is right now. It was, yeah, it was quite a, quite a thing. We used to gather in the, they had, because they had a change, a change uh, area there and um, I, be, I believe it was just a pot belly stove, and uh, we used to fire that thing up, and uh, it would be just so toasty warm. And then we'd go out, and it would be minus twenty or minus twenty-five, and we'd shoving this hose around, flooding the ice. <laughs> it was quite something. And um, then there, you know we used to um, every weekend uh, there would be a, we'd just have a pickup game of, of hockey in the rink. Um, there were some organized uh, hockey games uh, from teams from Canmore used to, to come up and um, as well. But when there weren't any organized games, we uh, we used to just a bunch of people would just go out there and, and play hockey, or, or there'd be skating parties um, as well. And then we we would get as we probably got into our mid-teens, we were a little more adventurous. And there was a there's a, a pond, a lake just to the west of here, it's called First Lake, uh, or was called First Lake at that time. We used to hike, well, sneak through the plant buildings proper and get down to this lake. We do that after school. Uh, uh, we'd have our skates on our backs and our hockey stick and we'd go down and clear the ice off on the pond and uh, play for hours, just skate on this, this lake for hours. It was all, winter was really, really good in, in Exha. Um, there was a ski hill that the old timers made. It was uh, up the creek and uh, probably you would go walk up this trail maybe uh, three quarters of a mile or so and then they, these old timers had, had cut a, a path up, up the mountain, up to, I don't know, probably a couple hundred yards up up the mountain and they used to ski down that and uh, there was nothing at the end you either had to turn or or do something because if you kept going straight where the the two paths intersected 
Um, I don't know how far of a drop it was, but <laughs> you learn pretty quick how to turn or how to stop. Why they chose that particular route, I don't know, but, but it continued on. The trail that went was going up the valley, was sort of on the edge of a, an embankment. Down, and it was quite a ways down into the, the Exshaw Creek. If you didn't negotiate that turn, um, it, was, it was a pretty steep drop. And of course, you'd probably get hung up on trees and stuff. But uh, we, I went to Exshaw School from grade one to eight. And then we, um, that was the extent of, of school in Exshaw. And so grade nine, <clears throat> um, we were scheduled to go to the Canmore School, but there, if I recall, there was there was a conflict between the Canmore School Board and the Exshaw School Board, and they didn't really want us there, so we ended up going to Banff, and so so grade nine, ten, eleven, twelve, um, we I went to school in Banff. Ray Cardinal was our bus driver. He he uh, he had a bus and. Uh, that was quite an exciting trip. <laughs> it was the the old highway, of course, and which was a, a windy, narrow, twisting road, and uh, there was all kinds of things that happened on that road. Uh, uh, always plowing through snow and and so forth. And especially once we got into the Banff Park, um, uh, as it seems like it's carried on forever, they don't look after the roads as well as everybody else does. And we had to stop and pick up a, a couple of kids at the warden's uh, residence just outside of Banff, sort of near where the uh, industrial area is now. And once we turned off the highway, it was, we were in usually three, four feet of drifted snow and we'd always get stuck because they'd never plow that road. Not very often, anyway, <clears throat> and so that was always an exciting part of our bus trip because we'd always be late, or <laughs> whatever. Well, a couple of times we we uh, uh, we we got stuck, and and by the time we got into Banff <clears throat> and uh, dropped off at at the school, there were three or four of us. We had there was a big snowfall that the night before, and there was a service station right across from the from the school and it was owned by one of the one of our buddies uh, who went to school and so we thought well heck we're late we're, we're you know we're we may as well finish off the rest of the morning and go and and plow his uh, his um, driveway off so which we did and and he thanked us very much and when we got back to school we weren't received very well because <laughs> Some of the teachers, of course, saw us there, <laughs> and they knew that the rest of the kids, how come they were here at such a time, at such and such a time, and you guys were late? Well, that's just who we were. <laughs> and we had to write, an, instead of having a lunch hour, we actually had to, I remember, we actually had to write an English test. I, I don't know whether that was scheduled or it was just spur of the moment punishment for us. But, um, so yeah, and Banff was was good. That opened our eyes quite a quite a bit. We were, as bus people, we were we were held captive in the school. <coughs> we couldn't go outside the school to go downtown uh, during our lunch uh, lunch break. Um, I re and I recall a story. I don't know how true it was, but but Banff, the Banff people. The Banff business people, especially, um, didn't want well a bunch of unruly kids running around their town, um, disrupting the tourists. Um, um, that's one of the stories that we heard. And so, anyway, we had to stay in the school unless we had a note from our parents. And it wasn't just a note to you know let Johnny out at noon. It was you had to have a really good explanation as to why you needed to go down downtown Banff. And I talked my mom into, <laughs> into writing several <laughs> so that I could uh, use them at will <laughs> because I just couldn't be captive. I just couldn't, they just couldn't hold me in. 
and uh, but it was good. Uh, Banff was good. Uh, once they found out that we are not a bunch of uh, orangutans, um, <coughs> I think it was probably two years later that they finally relaxed them, and they allowed us to uh, to be like normal kids and go downtown and and do whatever kids do. And we were um, there was uh, myself, Gary Jingles, and Ray Alford. We we all curled in Exshaw, and of course we all went to school in Banff. We were all about the same age, <coughs> and um, we were good enough that we we um, beat out the uh, any of the Banff kids uh, for um, the um, it used to be called the Taylor TPC Taylor Pearson Carson um, Junior Curling Championships and. Uh, so we, there were three of us plus one Banff uh, fellow uh, ended up being this team and uh, we went quite a ways in the, in the provincial uh, curling playdowns, uh, which, uh, and the, the southern Alberta curling playdowns that year happened to, to be held in Banff, which uh, unfortunately we didn't, uh, it wasn't, we didn't show up very well. <laughs> Some of these other teams were really, really out of our league, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, I forget the year that would have been, but <coughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, winters were really good. Uh, we did a lot, an awful lot in the winters.